Hey, good afternoon. Um, really excited for this stop. You know, and part of that is the people sitting out here. I've enjoyed that in every stop, getting to know you. Um, such a storied franchise. Um, to learn more about it and, and be part of it. Uh, a lot of people say, well, how did this start, this relationship, where, where I was attracted to this organization? In early talks with Kevin uh, and also with Quasi, it was really easy for me to feel how connected they were and aligned they were. And they had a vision. This is a vision of growth, a collaboration, you know, growing new people, growing leaders. And I want to be part of that. And I, I see myself as a team builder. And to jump on with somebody that's young and progressive, uh, with, that are on the top cutting edge of things, was really attractive to me. Another thing is, is you look at the Will family and how they have demonstrated to the National Football League that they're going to be first class in everything. You look at our stadium, you know, state of the art. This training facility is second to none. And they have the resources to help you do everything you possibly can to win. The Viking tradition, you know, you grow up as a young kid, a college kid. This is special. I've been in this league a long time, and to have the opportunity to be part of this, this fan base, they're, they're wonderful. You know, they're respected. Uh, you know they're going to come out and make it hard on that quarterback every week with you. And I just love this community and how they – support football. The, the tradition of Bud Grant, I hope I can meet him. I met Paul, I, I connected with Paul Wiggin again in the hallway today. It's those kind of guys with the tradition and the Bud Grant with his timeless wisdom. If I could tap into him, because he's still got it. And every, I've met him before. Um, one message is to the players. You know, we got a lot of work to do, but nobody's going to have more fun doing it. You know, we're going to have a good time. We're hiring a staff of teachers, positive teachers. And these guys are going to, they're also uh, guys that will grow young men, not just teach the scheme. But it's going to be a positive nature. We're going to have a great time. And these relationships will be very important to our success. You ask about the scheme that, that we're, we're going to implement in here. And uh, it's going to be a multiple dictating 3-4 three, four, and 4-3 four, set up. So just know we'll have both fronts, um, and that will, that will make us hard to play against. Everything else we do will be engineered to make it hard for the quarterback. That's physically and mentally. You know, keystone uh, foundation points, you know, we're going to set edges. Okay, that, that's our, our outside linebackers, defensive end. They're gonna, we're going to set hard edges. We're going to be a great tackling outfit. Um, you, you look at our history as coaches, uh, takeaways is, is, is a foundation point. That, that has to happen. And that has to be an edge for this team to get the ball for our offense so they can get into uh, scoring position and score points so we can win. So with that, I'd just like to open it to any questions you might have. What did you see? Did you look at a lot of tape of the Vikings? They had a lot of trouble in the last couple minutes of halves or games. Have you had a chance to look through that and say, this is what needs to change? No, I haven't, I haven't got to that. Uh, but we'll address all problems. That's a very important one. It's a fair question. You know, you want to win the middle eight of a game at half, and you want to, you know, you want to be at your best at the end as well. At this point, do you have any uh, idea how you, how you will use Daniil Hunter? Yeah, he, he would be an outside linebacker defensive end. Yes. We can do both. What's that? We can do both. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, uh, I think Kevin mentioned this. You know, very much of the, the, the downs we'll be playing in this league because of the multiple receivers, there's going to be in a lot of nickel. And in the nickel, we'll play an even front and an odd front. So that won't be much change. There'll be a lot of carryover to, to our guys. So, um, you know, ch change, when, when, when change happens, there's a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty. And some people are uncomfortable with change. But we welcome that. That's a good thing. You know, that, that's opportunity. And uh, we don't know where we're going right now exactly. There's so much that our staff and myself has to do to learn our players, to learn our talents, to learn their minds. So, you know, our emphasis right now is pouring into learning our people. And when you learn your people, you can take them somewhere. And that's what our intention is.
as a uh, as a savvy veteran, has been around the league a long time. Uh, how, how do you keep fresh that you can communicate with the younger people, and, and and how do you stay nimble that you don't go back to your kind of old ways? Yeah, fair question. I love it. You know, that's what I am. I'm going to be like this till I'm done, and I'm on a, I'm on a five year plan. You know, so five years from now, and then next year it'll be five more. And so you just figure it out that way. So. Um, you got to work at it because there's more layers when you when you when you get up there in age a little bit. And if you can combine staying current and using your experience, then you got something. And that's my intention. So what I do, I, I listen to young people, and I and I seek and I put energy into learning them. Uh, my sons are coaches, and they're at a younger age, and they played, and I I, I ask them a lot of things because the, the views have changed and. Uh, people that get up there and say, well, uh, these kids have changed and this and that. Um, it, 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 people have always been changing, you know, since the beginning of time. And it's our job as leaders to uh, work to relate. Well, you've got players who have been in a 4-3 scheme and you talk about going to multiple fronts. What's the biggest thing you have to teach players who have maybe not played in that type of a scheme before? Yeah. Great question. There's always an adjustment. And if you look at uh, just in the 3-4 uh, with uh, one of my, my great partner, Vic Fangio, we rolled into San Francisco about 11 years, 12 years ago, and we did a four-year stint there. And they already had some 3-4 setup going there. And we rolled into Chicago, and their defense had started to decline, and they were 4-3. So there was a, a major change there. Um, so we did that exercise, and then we, we rolled into Denver four years later. So it helps to have been through the drill a couple times. Uh, the only thing I want to do different here is do it better. You know, you should get better at things if you've had a couple, you know, runs through it. So uh, I don't know if I answered your question. Uh, what, uh, uh, what did I fear? I don't fear anything, you know. Uh, I want to put all my experience together to fix it and get it right. One thing you hear about some of the Fangio style defenses that Staley ran um, is the phrase gap and a half when it comes to that front. What does that mean? Uh, good question. Uh, uh, it, you know, it means we're going to hit blocks thick, okay? We have big, strong bodies inside, and then we're going to get off blocks, so you might be playing your gap and a half. Uh, that, and then it relates to the linebackers. They're going to be you know, stacking a gap, falling back. So we, we get overlap. This thing is about overlap. And then there's this, the next level. You know, our guys will be coming down from a shell alignment. And they're that third layer of overlap, a safety or a corner. So that's kind of where that speaks to. And, uh, you know, we want to have overlap so we can make it harder for the quarterback to see what's really going on when they snap it. And what, what is it about Kevin's? Uh, you talk about young and progressive, yeah. one, working with these younger coaches. Uh, what is it specifically about him, his young and progressive approach that, that you like? No, I, I, I just connected with it, you know, and I, that's the way I stay young. I have to be around young, open, progressive, new ideas. Um, I welcome the science of the NFL, you know. Uh, we use this term analytics. We need both, you know. It's not this. It's this that makes that work. Ed, you have a lot of players that have played together for a long time on defense. You know, Anthony Barr, Eric Kendricks, uh, Harrison Smith. Will they be allowed to have their input, even though you're you're doing different schemes? Is that your coaching style to like listen to what they have to say also and, and move forward that way? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You know, how can you be the best if you're not tapping into people and getting their views? And I want to grow their views. You know, if we grow them, even though they're veteran players in certain areas, then they can give you back more. But that's that's really the secret. That's a secret to a coaching staff. You know, we have a new coaching staff. I haven't coached with any of them, but bringing them together and learning them and learning their strengths and us, you know, working off each other. That, that's how it works. So, answer to a short question is, absolutely. Now we are the coaches and we are the leaders and there are parameters, but. Uh, but when it flows and they create something that you haven't seen before, that, that's really powerful. You mentioned learning the personnel and, and the players you have in the building. Who excites you about this defense? What excites me? Who? You know, I, I don't want to get into names. You guys know the, the, uh, 
you know, the core guys are here, and then some guys aren't under contract. And if I left somebody's name out, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. You know, we, we think all these guys are a potential starter or a potential star. And our thing is to connect with them and then see how far we can take them. Ed, in, in Denver, you were 25th in 2020 and then moved up to third in defense last year. Does, how did you orchestrate that turnover? Yeah, man. In points, uh, in, in points again. Short memory, go ahead. But, um, but does that give you optimism that you can orchestrate a similar turnaround here? And, I, and what were the keys to that turnaround? Yeah. First of all, yes, we are confident that we can. Um, but, you know, we're just on a journey. It just started. And it's going to be different than the last journey. But when you've done it a few times, I, I'm confident of that. And I know some of the, you know, there'll be setbacks along the way. You know, and you may have to tweak things, uh, so forth. But yeah, we're very confident in our, in our you know, in our, our path shows that we've been able to do that. Now we got to prove it, and that's that's the fun, right? Coach, you talked about having a lot of work to do, but having fun while doing yeah. it and incorporating positivity. I guess, how much do you believe that that culture and that locker room chemistry leads to, or at least contributes to, success on the field? Yeah, two things. One, you, you should have some fun. Why wouldn't you do that? You know, if you can coach in this great league, have fun and have this great lifestyle, what, what, you know, that, that's the ultimate. And I choose to have both, to be able to be part of success and have a, a good time. What was the other part of that question? Oh, just how much um, culture oh, and yeah, chemistry yeah. lead that, to success. That's really the thing that Kevin and Quasi and all of our coaching staff is trying to do, okay? And there, we want a cultural advantage. We want a culture where a guy puts on a Viking uniform, he just plays better where he comes from. We want a culture where guys want to come here, all right, with thriving culture. But culture means everything. Everybody says, hey, you know, this guy's over here. He plays this, this uh, technique, this position. Do your job. It's not just that. It's the environment and the community. Everybody, the jobs you have, how, how important is the community and the friends you have and the relations you, relationships you have to your success? Right, it's big. Everybody in here can feel it. You you can tell when you've had a job where you, you know, are excited to turn your car in there and go to work and see your colleagues. And there's other times where hey, this this is going to be a drag today. So we want to create that. Um, it takes a lot of effort. It's not easy. It has to be nurtured and nurtured. And when you have it, you still have to nurture it. Last couple for coach. Ed, what, what's one way that's maybe most obvious to you about how the scheme that you're running now is? different than, say, 20 years ago when you're with Green Bay or whatever? Scheme? Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I was 4-3 coach for, you know, half of this, and 3-4. Uh, it's more like how the, the offense, you know, they're the guys changing us, you know, because we're defense, and that's the evolution there. That's where it's changed, you know, the quarterback and the gun, the RPOs, you know, the – the, you know the, the our, our, I got to back up. When you play against um, Wes's offense here, that'll that'll battle test us. You know they have so many problem sets in there that you got to work through. That that uh, I have on my mind, but that'll have us ready to play. You know they play with tempo. They play. They change the width. They uh, just multiple pass combinations that are cutting edge. So so that's that's how it's changed. They changed us. You know. You got a background with defensive backs. What do uh, DBs need to do well in, in your defense to make things hard on, on the offense? Yeah, great question. You know, uh, we want guys to have multiple talents, you know, and first of all, we want them to have b ball skills. Okay, we want to be able to cover man to man if we're talking corner or safeties. Uh, we'll, we'll have safeties that are interchangeable, and like the safeties are playing here now, they can be down in the box and also in the deep part of the field. But uh, ultimately, it's the, it's the unit working together. When you can get corners outside that can cover man to man, that's a, that's a great asset to you. And how much have you talked to Mike Pettin, and how do you anticipate you all working together yeah. on the defense? Very good. You know, uh, Mike is a, you know a long time um, you know colleague in the business. I never worked with him. Got great respect for him. He, he's uh, going to be the assistant head coach and help, but but he's a huge resource. You know, anytime you can bounce things off a guy that's been in your shoes, um, that brings a wealth of knowledge, you know, we're, and we'll use him where we need him.
You know, I mean, he's he's so flexible, uh, but a uh, great asset in the game planning. He'll be around for that. Thanks, Adrian. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.